The Philips 27B1 U7903 might just be the perfect monitor for professionals. Indeed, it sports a 27-inch 4K IPS panel with quantum dot technology, has got a mini LED structure with a whopping 2,304 local dimming zones, display HDR 1400, HDMI display port and also Thunderbolt 4 connectivity via its USB-C port which also can deliver power and you've also got a four side borderless design. Now all of this comes in at roughly £1,000 in the UK and $1,000 in the US. In this video which has been sponsored by the manufacturer I'll be giving you all the information that you need to know about it so that you can make your own informed purchasing decision. So jumping straight in, let's talk about image quality. And here it has got a resolution of 3840 times 2160 that operates at 60 Hz. It has also got a flat IPS panel with a matte coating to it, therefore you don't have to worry about reflections. And furthermore, due to its 27 inch form factor, it has got an extremely high 163 ppi. Therefore meaning that text will look very sharp and clear, and due to the IPS panel means that viewing angles are a non-issue. Now, 3D Monitors OSD, you'll also find a few preset modes, such as NTSC, sRGB, Adobe RGB, DCI-P3, Rec 2020, Rec 709, and D mode. Now, all of these have actually got brightness controls, and the vast majority of them have also got gamma controls, which is certainly appreciated. Now, through my calibrators and using the sRGB mode to start off with, I actually had the gamut coverage and gamut volume tested. And here you'll be able to see that it was recorded at 91.5% and 92.9% .9 in the sRGB color space. You can see below how it compares to the standard. As for the average delta E and maximum delta E, it sits at 1.2 and 2.71 respectively, which therefore means that this monitor can be used for serious image editing work or video grading, at least in comparison to the sRGB space. Now, in terms of the test of contrast ratio, it clocked in at 1,133 to 1, with the measured white point at 5,949 Kelvin at 100%. Below, you can see how it compares to the Gamma 2.2 standard. Now, shifting over to the Adobe RGB mode through the OSD, you can see here that the gamut coverage against the Adobe RGB standard sits at 96.7% and a gamut volume of 97.9%. You can see below how it compares to the color space. As for the average delta E, it sits at 1.51 and the maximum at 3.3, yet again making it very much usable for serious image editing or video grading work. The test of contrast ratio does not change, while the measured white point does slightly shift at 6138 Kelvin at 100%. As for the gamma curve, it actually gets a little bit more tightened towards the 2.2 standards. Now as we move over to the DCI-P3 color space, you can see now that the gamut coverage and gamut volumes have now been a little bit more adjusted towards the DCI-P3 color space, sitting at 96.9% and 99.5%, and below you can see how it compares to the standards. However, in this case, you can see that the average delta E and the maximum delta E have shifted at 1.85 and 4.37 respectively. As for the measured white point, it does actually get a little bit better at 6,293 Kelvin at 100%, while the gamma curve actually sits pretty close to the 2.6 standard, which is required for said color space. Now, I would like to point out that all these results were without a calibration, and indeed, I was testing out-of-the-box performance. And therefore, you can see that the manufacturer has tried to adhere to the different color spaces, which is actually pretty impressive. Now, in terms of the overall brightness, in HDR, I recorded up to 867 nits. However, with local dimming enabled in HDR, I noted 1,545 nits to 1,842 nits, which is ridiculously bright. Now, in SDR, it does actually get still pretty bright at 765 nits. However, with local dimming enabled, which, by the way, is indeed an option, you can get up to 817 nits. As for minimum brightness, it gets all the way down to 4.66 nits, showing absolutely fantastic range across the board. Now, moving swiftly on, we get on to brightness uniformity. And of course, I appreciate it's somewhat panel lottery, but you'll be able to see how my tested monitor actually performed. It should be green across the board, but you'll be able to see that there's some orange and red. The same could be said about backlight bleed. In this respect, these images were taken in SDR with local dimming disabled. 
Now, if you were to enable the local dimming option, be it in SDR or HDR, you'll get a completely pitch black image. And indeed, that is due to the fact that you've got that mini LED structure with a whopping 2,304 local dimming zones, which is absolutely magnificent. Now, you will still get a little bit of haloing, specifically if you have got a white cursor in a completely pitch black image. However, it is actually quite minimized in comparison to other monitors out there that do not have such a high count of local dimming zones, this actually does try and prevent the overall haloing effect from ruining the overall visual experience. So past all these tests, let's talk about the overall build quality. And here you've got a four side borderless design. And in fact, there is a little power sensor that can pop out towards the bottom of the monitor, giving you an even flusher look if you're not gonna be using said feature. Now the monitor's stand is actually very sturdy and very ergonomically designed. You've got height, tilt, pivot and swivel adjustments. In fact it can be rotated in both ways which shows great sort of versatility. Of course if you do not want to use the built-in monitor stand or if you simply want to mount it on a monitor arm you can replace it with a Visa compatible stand. Now as for the overall OSD it can be accessed via some buttons that are found towards the bottom right hand corner of the monitor. These will give you a very comprehensive suite of options. The monitor's OSD is very easy to understand and also quite responsive. Now furthermore, you'll be able to note that there is an audio setting and that is because the monitor has actually got two 3 watt speakers built in. They will suffice for basic music listening or indeed Windows notifications. Now, should you want to route audio through the monitor but not disturb anyone around you, you'll be pleased to know that it's got a 3.5 millimeter jack output. Now this actually perfectly brings me on to connectivity, where you've got a singular DisplayPort 1.4 port, two HDMI 2.0 ports, and a singular Thunderbolt 4 port, which also delivers up to 90 watts of power delivery, making it handy if you want to simultaneously charge your laptop while using it. Now there is also daisy chaining capabilities, thanks to the secondary Thunderbolt 4 port, which will in itself deliver up to 15 watts of power. There is also four USB 3.2 ports, one of which also has fast charging capability if you want to, for example, plug in your peripherals or let's say charge a smartphone. And elsewhere, you've got a high speed one gigabit RJ45 input, which also has wake on LAN capabilities. So to conclude, I would just like to point out that this is not a gaming centric panel. However, this 4K 60 Hz monitor has got a few different smart response time settings that you can select via the OSD. I would not recommend going anything above the fast mode presets in order for you not to get too much inverse ghosting. Elsewhere, you have got that fantastic display HDR 1400 certification, which will give you a lifelike HDR reproduction, be it if you're gaming or simply just watching movies. And this is also due to the fact that you have got that mini LED structure with those whopping 2304 local dimming zones. Now with all that in mind, I'd be curious to know what you make of the Philips 27B1U7903 down in the comment section below. And if you're a professional, if you'd pick it over some of the rival alternatives. Now if you have liked this detailed video, definitely do consider dropping a like, subscribing and hitting that bell notification. All of which would be greatly appreciated. As such, I've been totally dubbed and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.